Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. Many of you liked my advanced spot shot drill video. Well, I've got another one and it's advanced as well or for intermediate players looking to improve. The more often that you can add purpose and intent to your practice sessions, the more quickly you will improve and that's what this drill is for. Actually, this one is less drill and more structured training, but you can make drills out of it and adjust the shots for whatever game you're working on. I call it the other spot shot drill. The spot shot drill had you make the same spot shot while positioning the cue ball around the table. This time, the ball is on the spot, but the cue ball is one diamond below, and you will be pocketing the ball in all six pockets. This practice will benefit any pool game, but on the right side of the screen, I show which game each shot is most relevant to. One pocket players are going to love two thirds of these shots. On the left side of the screen, you'll see which pockets are being targeted. I recorded these shots on my gold crown with four and three eighths inch pockets. Having a ball return makes spotting the next shot a breeze. If you think I made every shot on the first try, I have a bridge to sell you. Stay tuned to the end for some outtakes. But it's important to start with the object ball on the spot and the cue ball directly in line. This way you shoot each shot immediately followed by its mirror image. Any difficulties seeing the shot on each side of the mirror can help identify vision center or alignment issues. This illustration shows where I'm addressing the cue ball for each shot. This drill is about expanding your ability to control the cue ball in new ways while pocketing difficult shots. Let's get started. Okay, the first shot is just a cut shot in the left corner pocket. How many times have you faced this semi-difficult shot to win a game of nine ball or during a game of one pocket when your opponent has a ball hanging in the jaws of his pocket? You wouldn't normally play position for a shot like this, but you don't get better practicing the shots you already know. You need to practice the unfamiliar so you don't struggle with it when it comes up during a game. The purpose of this shot is becoming accustomed to finding that aiming point. You're going to need quite a bit of precision since the object ball is so far from the pocket. And all we're trying to do here is cinch the shot and control the cue ball. Shot number two is a very similar stroke but we're aiming a little higher on the cue ball to bring the cue ball towards center table for a shot on a ball that's down table. Shot number three is struck similarly, except with a little bit more force to bring the cue ball all the way back across the table. Shot number four is a straight follow shot, but you're learning just how high to hit the cue ball so that you don't scratch in the side pocket. And where does the cue ball go? should go near to the center of the far short rail. For my mirror image shot, I shot it with another rail of speed. Maybe you could call this shot 4A, but look where the cue ball is going. Almost exactly where it went when I stunned the ball across table in shot 3. Shot number 5 is a full follow stroke. Go ahead and hit it with a 7 or 8 out of the 1 to 10 power range and just Pay attention to where, where the cue ball is hitting the rail and how far it travels. Go ahead and experiment with a couple at uh, a 9 or a 10 power level, uh, but be careful to maintain your accuracy on making the ball. That's what this is all about. For shot number six, we'll bring the cue tip back down below center. We want to stun the cue ball all the way across table. Perhaps you're playing position for the seven ball in this example, and that's your game ball in the game of one pocket. And so go ahead and shoot the next ball that you just played position for. And one pocket players, don't solo roll this ball. Hit it with authority like you know where it's going. After you become more comfortable with this shot in its mirror, move the object ball farther down the rail. See if you don't prefer stunning the cue ball straight across or coming two rails as in this example.
any left or right English in these shots is going to make the cue ball much harder to control and it's going to make it much harder to pocket the object ball. So stay in the center of the cue ball. Shot number seven I call a dead weight hold. This is especially relevant to one pocket players. Give yourself a second object ball that you need to hold the cue ball. The object ball is traveling a long distance and the cue ball is traveling a very short distance, but you want the cue ball off the rail so that you can bridge comfortably for your next shot. In the final shot for the far corner pockets, you get to let your stroke out. This is similar to shot number three. You're doing a Z pattern across the table, but give yourself a target ball all the way on the bottom rail. One pocket players are going to love this shot. We've seen uh, good players like Tony Chacon pull this type of shot off quite often. You could actually spend an entire practice session playing the cue ball to different portions of the table over near that corner pocket, depending on where you place your target object ball. For shot number nine, we're moving on to the side pockets. And this is similar to shot one. We're just trying to make the ball, just cinch the ball. And if you haven't tried this before, you're gonna be surprised at how thinly you can cut the ball while holding the cue ball below the side pocket. And you can hit it very softly, striking very low on the cue ball. No left or right spin. And if that shot surprised you, you're gonna love learning that you can hit with a very high cue ball and go on the other side of the side pocket. Now that you've become comfortable pocketing this ball, try stunning it across the table. Shot number 10, struck with a little bit more force, will bring the cue ball all the way back down table past the side pocket and you don't need any side English to do this. Just a smooth center ball way at the top of the cue ball. And finally, what you one pocket players have been waiting for, the bank shot. Shot number 13, we just start with a simple straight back bank, cinch the shot, just control the cue ball to the side rail. Next is a smooth follow shot. You want the cue ball to finish as close to the opposite rail as possible. Those two shots are pretty straightforward, but how often do you practice playing position on your long rail bank shots? Here I want position on the seven for a follow-up shot in my pocket. As you practice, are you more consistent to one side than the other? You might want to check your stance and alignment. Be sure that your setup is aligned with the aiming point on the bank shot before you get down on the shot. Drawing to short side position is common in one pocket. Don't wait for the game situation to practice these crucial shots. Sometimes a bit less draw to the side rail is what's called for. It's a tricky shot. Make sure to include it in your practice session. In one pocket, we're often banking a ball with leg speed just to the pocket, but your game's gonna benefit if you practice stroking the ball and playing position for balls at various locations back into your pocket. 
Shot number 18 is considered a very aggressive one pocket shot, but if you have a clear path to the pocket and you've practiced this shot a lot, this can be the difference between getting one ball and getting a bunch. Even if you never end up shooting this aggressive shot during a game, the experience gained on the practice table is going to benefit you in unexpected ways. And finally, a bonus shot in case you're feeling really aggressive and the one lane path to the pocket is blocked. This is the only shot in this practice routine that requires a little bit of side English, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be surprised at how consistently you can pocket this bank. Did you think that this practice drill was a bit too much? I find your lack of faith disturbing. This practice routine can't be that difficult after all. The object ball and the cue ball are in the same position for every single shot. And yet there are 18 different shots with variations and the mirror image for each shot. For me, that's the testament to how beautiful and intricate the game of pool is. Now imagine if you vary the starting position of the object ball and the cue ball and try the same shots. I think that demonstrates how valuable this type of structured practice session is as opposed to just randomly shooting balls. And with every single shot, except for the bonus shot, the cue tip never left the vertical axis of the cue ball. If you're like me, you'll notice that as you struggle through the challenge of attempting to control the cue ball in different ways from the same initial shot setup, it's going to occur to you that you haven't missed pocketing the ball in a while. Your pocketing percentage is going to go up. You might think that you'll never shoot some of these shots in a game, but you might surprise yourself. And even if you don't, it's by challenging yourself to do more that you learn and grow. And it's by making mistakes within a structured format that you're able to analyze why the mistake happened, adjust your approach, and then start having more success. And that's what this drill does. In a moment, you're gonna to get to laugh at some of my mistakes. Good luck. I hope you found that informative, entertaining, and helpful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Head over to satoriflatrack.com and check out the promo video for my new and unique pool ball rack. And of course, shortstoponpool.com for my book, A Shortstop on Straight Pool. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time at Shortstop on Pool. Ha ha ha!